Hey, what's up guys? I'm really excited to bring you this video on how I built my new workbench slash assembly table. It's got a torsion top that will provide a rigid and flat surface for assembly. And this thing has seven drawers and three cabinets with shelves that can also be converted to more drawers if you like. So it's certainly not short on storage options. The bulk of the workbench is made from 3 quarter inch plywood, which you see me breaking down in my driveway using my track saw before taking them inside to cut them down to size. If you'd like to follow along, I've got a link to the plans in the descriptions below, which includes full cutting diagrams and step-by-step -step instructions to help you in your build. Before assembling the pieces together, I applied some iron-on type edge banding to cover up the exposed plywood edges of the cabinet sides. I began the assembly process of the main case by drilling pocket holes on the two side panels and the underside of the bottom panel. With glue applied to the joints, I squared up the panels with some corner clamps and then tied them together with screw and clamps. Here you see me marking out the size of the vertical partition by referencing the parts that were just assembled before cutting on a table saw. Using this method of referential measurement, all the pieces will fit much more accurately in the end. And while I'm at the table saw, I ripped some pieces for the stretchers of the main case. I cross-cut the longer left side stretchers to size and then used that to mark the length of the shorter stretchers. Once again using referential measurements, I snuck up on the cut until I got the perfect fit. And then I cut the pocket holes into the pieces off camera before I moved on to assembly. I placed the stretchers on the bottom panel to help me locate and square up the vertical partition. Then using some clamps to hold it down, I screwed it into place. And then finally I attach the horizontal stretchers on top to tie everything together. Remember to offset the spacing between the pocket holes so that the screws don't end up running into each other. Next, I measure 4 and cut the 3 quarter inch back panel for the main case. Using my track saw and the giant square helps me to square up one corner of the workpiece, which will be a good reference point to square up the other corners when I cut it down to size. After I applied glue all along the back edges of the main case assembly, I placed the back panel on top and then secured it using clamps and screws. With the main case complete and set aside, I moved on to breaking down the pieces for the two rear cabinets. And just as before, I drilled pocket holes into the three panels that will make up each side of the rear cabinets. Because these two cabinets are mirror images of each other, be sure to drill the panels along the correct edges. Order of operation here isn't really crucial, but I first assembled the rear panel to the side panel, and then the two are tied together by the bottom panel. I'd like to take this moment and say a quick thank you for checking out this video. And if you're enjoying it, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button to keep up with all of my future projects. It really goes a long way in helping me to further grow this channel. <music> Lastly, I attached one of the top stretchers to the rear cabinets thinking that it would help me to keep the side square. But I really should have waited until after attaching the rear cabinets to the main case before doing this. And you'll see why in a minute. With the main case face down, I applied glue along one of the edges of the rear cabinets and then attached it to the main case with screws through the panels as well as the stretcher. When I went to attach the second rear cabinet, I realized I put the aforementioned top stretcher in the wrong location. Thankfully, it wasn't anything that a love tap from a rubber mallet couldn't fix, but it would have been easier to just attach these stretchers later. case assembly complete, I moved on to installing some leveling feet and these workbench casters with release plates so the cabinet can remain level and sturdy when in use but still mobile if I ever have to move it. 
I've got links to all the tools and hardware I use in the description below. And if you got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or just DM me on Instagram at bevelish underscore creations. I'd be glad to help answer any questions related to the build. With the workbench carcass set aside, I began to break down some half-inch ply for the drawer boxes at the table saw. After all the pieces were cut to size, I set up my router table to quickly run all the boards through for a dado to accept the drawer bottoms, which are made from quarter-inch ply. Using a combination of a clamping square and the dog holes on my workbench, I made quick work of gluing up three sides of the drawer boxes. I cut the quarter inch thick drawer bottoms off camera, which I dropped into the dados cut earlier, and then glued up the fourth side to complete the drawer boxes. Rinse and repeat for the rest of the drawers. Next, I began to install the drawer boxes by first attaching the bottom drawer slide with a spacer, and then I positioned the bottom box about a quarter inch up from the base using a couple of quarter inch plywood pieces as spacers. To attach the slide to the drawer box, I first pulled the slides out with the box in order to fasten two screws to either side, and then I pulled the drawer box out to fasten the third screw before sliding it back into the drawer slides. And then I just repeated this for the rest of the drawer boxes on the left side of the main case before moving on to the two shallow drawers on the right side. But instead of referencing the drawer box position off of the bottom of the case, I simply found the middle of the drawer box and then attached the male end of the drawer slide along that line. And to add some shelves to the cabinet under the two shallow drawers as well as the two side cabinets, I used this jig by Craig to quickly cut some holes for the shelf pins. Here, I'm breaking down a single sheet of 3 quarter inch ply to make all the drawer fronts and the cabinet door in order to keep a continuous grain pattern. I used some spacers to help me place the drawer fronts in the proper location and then fasten them to the drawer boxes with screws from the inside. Here I'm laying out for where to drill the holes for attaching the drawer pulls. The holes were drilled slightly larger than the screws that came with the pulls to account for any tolerances, and will give me some room to make adjustments before tightening everything down. Before installing the drawer fronts on the two shallow drawers on the top right, I first installed the door which will become the reference for the position of the two smaller drawer fronts. This Craig jig made it really easy for me to get the hinges installed properly. Using the same method, I installed the doors to the side cabinets as well. And once the door is in position, I installed the top two drawer fronts using the top edge of the door as reference. With all the storage complete, it's time to start building the torsion top. Here I'm measuring and cutting the lower skin of the torsion top as well as all the pieces that will make up the frame and the inner grids from a single piece of half inch MDF. Here 
here I'm attaching the outer frame pieces to the lower skin. I use the square and clamps to hold everything in place before shooting some brad nails. I'd like to mention here real quick, to assemble a torsion top, it's very important to start out with a flat and level surface. My current assembly table already fit those requirements, but if you currently don't have a flat surface to work off of, there are plenty of videos on YouTube on how to make a level flat surface using a few 2x4s and a couple of saw horses. So for the sake of time, I won't go into that in this video. Next, I attach the long inner grid pieces to the lower skin using a couple of short grid pieces as spacers to keep things straight and spacing consistent. Once the long inner grids are attached, I attach the short pieces using the same method. Take your time and always note where your fingers are because the brat nail shots can get a little bit awkward here. Before placing the top skin on, I mark the location of the grids on the side frame. This will help me line up the shots with the brat nailer later on. I laid the top skin on after applying glue over the top edge of the grid. The top skin was cut larger than the lower portion of the torsion top, so I can just simply flush things up later. I transferred my grid location marks to the top skin, and then shot brat nails along those lines to secure the top skin to the grid. To fill and hide those brad nail holes, I used a sawdust and glue mixture. Alternatively, using a pin nailer would have made the holes practically invisible, or you can cover the top up with a sheet of hardboard if it really bothers you. Here, I'm using my router and flush trim bit to flush up the top skin to the rest of the torsion box. Finally, I moved the torsion box onto the cabinet and moved it into position with 3 inches of overhang on the front and on the sides, and then attaching them together by shooting screws from the bottom. <music> Lastly, I added some trim to protect and hide the ugly edges on the torsion top. I used a piece of walnut for this. I first cut a 45 degree miter on one end, and then took a referential measurement at the workbench to figure out where to cut on the other end. I first attached the front and rear trim pieces using just glue and clamps, but my clamps weren't long enough for the side to side span, so I ended up just shooting a few brad nails to hold those down. The brad nail holes actually turned out to be pretty hard to see against the dark wood, so I didn't even bother filling those. And finally, I applied a couple coats of shellac to finish off the project. If you enjoyed this build, give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and also check me out on Instagram at bevelish underscore creations because I've got a lot of projects planned for this year and would love to have you guys follow along. And if you're interested in building this workbench, I've got a link to the plans in the descriptions below. My plan sales is one of the ways I can keep up with the cost of these projects, so your support is greatly appreciated. And once again, thank you so much for checking out this video, and I'll see you guys next time.